Hello, my name is James, and today I'm going to be your inspector on this standard of a WW40S. That is our pour-in-place concrete street light base. And today what we're talking about is some of the standards that's associated with it, contractor practices and how it is actually gets done and completed, and also some of the components that you're going to be able to see later throughout the video. So this here is our end game. Here's what I want to see when we show up. Our standard would call out a 12 and a half inch bolt pattern that's measuring across the sides here. This one here is actually 11 inches. And that's the reason why is because there's a different type of street light base that's going to be placed in this location. Get with your engineer and he can tell you what size and where at. Our standard would call out these threaded here would be four inches sticking above finished edge of concrete. This one's three inches. Again, get with your engineer and he'll call out the proper distance that you need to have. That's really probably the only difference upon this particular street light base, but all of them have a little bit of different component. Our standard is what we're talking about today. This concrete here will stick two inches above grade and you'll see this beveled edge here also. He used a 24 inch sauna tube, six foot long in the ground and then removed the sauna tube just slightly above grade here so that the, the sauna tube is no longer exposed. I also want to point out that uh, there is to be string blowed in every location. It may, it may go from, from here to the transformer location. It may go from here to a secondary pedestal. It just, again, just depends on what's been called out. We also have our bell ends that's also installed, so be sure and put enough distance between your radiuses that you put in here to be able to install these properly. These have to be installed as well to be able to make wire pulling purposes much easier. And you'll also be able to see our uh, copper and how much of it that we use in our next uh, few shots. So we're at a location now where the contractor is fixing to actually install all the components used to go ahead and complete and build this uh, street light base before we pour the concrete. What I'm holding here is a plastic 24 inch radius uh, PVC 90. Typically what we have is two. We have one coming in, one going out. On some of your uh, plans or, or standards that you may be working by, it may actually call for a small radius. It may call for three. It may only call for one. So be sure and look at your plans and what it is that the, con or the, that the engineer has called out for this actual installation and the purpose of what it's going to be supporting. Um, here is our copper that we see at the bottom that I showed out at the end of what it looks like. This is just a simple roll that's going to be placed in the bottom and it's 10 foot roll at the bottom. You usually have about 8 foot so you can, you can, you can plan on 18 to 24 feet of uh, number 4 copper coming up through and we have a minimum of 2 foot sticking out of the ground that's coiled up and then placed back inside the pipe temporarily and taped off so it's out of the uh, public's eye. This stuff happens to disappear overnight. It's a magic thing that happens. Here we have a 36 inch, 1 inch galvanized bolt that goes down inside. And what you'll see here is three foot long, 36 inches. It has a four inch bend and that also gets placed down inside the concrete and brought up to the top. Per our standard, four inches of this will be sticking above the concrete. Your standard, your, uh, your engineer may have called out two inches, may be calling out three inches. It just depends on what type of uh, pole or base or whatever may be uh, sitting on that is going to be, it will determine your bolt length sticking out of that level concrete. Um, one thing I would recommend, walk with me here, is having a nice long level like this one. This here can shoot your uh, coming off the curb and also get across the top of these, uh, these uh, sauna tubes and be able to have things perfectly level. We are allowed to use now some what we call horseshoe shims but that's it. Years ago, we could use leveling nuts to be able to bring things up and down across this uh, threaded piece of bolt that come up through the concrete and level up things for our bases. We will no longer do that. So now what we have to do is make sure that that concrete, whenever it's scared it off, whenever it's completed and done, that that is level. This is a must. You must use this. So, also the sauna tube. 24 inches across diameter is what we're looking for minimum. And then six feet depth is what you're going to need to have. 
and this sauna tube will be placed two inches above grade. That's going to be the top of our concrete with a beveled edge, two inches above grade. So on the next location that we're going to go to, I'm going to show you what it looks like prior to uh, putting the actual concrete in the tube and getting things set. That's the point where you would actually call me or the next inspector to come over and have a look at your final job prior to pouring concrete. All right, so what we have here, this is a very common construction practice and the, the framing of what it is that, that we're currently looking at here. Um, this, is, this, this is our 24 inch by six foot sauna tube that's, that's placed in the ground. And inside we have just a little bit of gravel to kind of help hold that, the copper in place. So when the concrete comes rushing in there, it's not gonna move a bunch of stuff around. Contractor has his, his bolt pattern established per standard for what the engineer has called out. Our standard says it's a 12 and a half inch bolt pattern. This actually happens to be an 11 and a half inch bolt pattern, but again, we have to go to what your engineer has called out on your specific plan, your specific job detail, to make sure that everything lines up with what type of uh, either bases or street light poles will be set out here. That we're talking about our standard today, so this is what it is I'm pointing out. So we have our, uh, our 24 inch radiuses already stubbed up here through there. It's gonna be at the top of our concrete. Got the bell ends already installed. He'll blow in a string later because underneath here we got connecting conduit going both ways. This is also affixed to the sauna tube so that whenever uh, the concrete come, comes in there, it's not going to go nowhere. It's going to be able to stay there nice and nice and uh, uh, pretty like. There are actually templates that you can purchase. I'm not sure where at, but I have seen them before in the past that has adjustable bolt patterns as well. And those are also commonly used, but I just don't see a lot of them. The most important thing it is that I'm looking for whenever we show up is how level these sauna tubes are sitting in here because I know that they're gonna screed across the top of these and this is gonna be their form to have that level grade across there that we absolutely have to have. We have pretty much a zero tolerance. I've mentioned that several times in this video and that's the reason why I'm making it. These have to be level. You'll also see in the background how unlevel things are appearing to the eye. So don't trust your eye and think that you can make this right. Use a level. So if you have any more questions, be sure and give me a call at 417-450-7347. You can also call our tech house at 417-831-8888. And always be sure and call in Locates, 1-800-DIG-RIGHT. Be safe.